Have you ever felt like 3D printed blasters were just an out of reach, out of budget, inaccessible segment of this hobby? Welcome to the club. Cause I, as well as a lot of us just classic Nerf enthusiasts feel the same exact way. But it doesn't have to be that way. If you've ever been curious and wondered if there's alternatives to the 3D print market, this video is for you. If you're new here, I really appreciate you guys visiting. If you do end up enjoying this video, please hit the like button. It helps this video also find more people like yourself that are big time enthusiasts of this hobby. Can't get enough of it, get it? And at the same time are just looking for transparent, honest, down to earth reviews, analytics, usage data, pretty much just the fun factor of the sport covered all right here. We have a big giveaway of 4,000 subscribers. So if you'd like to subscribe now, wouldn't be a bad time to do it as well. Subscribing makes you eligible to win an amazing prize. Every time we double our subscribers, basically we've been giving away awesome blasters. I still haven't come up with what I'm going to give away at 4,000 because I would just want it to be really amazing. It's been a crazy busy last seven days. That's why you haven't seen any uploads from me. I've had my hand hands full with a myriad of projects, not only here in the household. I've had a lot of renovations and a lot of restructuring going on. I've been preparing for a new indoor Nerf range. Extends my firing distance from 15 to 25 feet, so I'll be able to test a little bit more accurately, especially those high performance blasters. Without further ado, let's get into today's topic. You guys might recall a couple of weeks ago, I came up with this video talking about my first experience with a 3D printed blaster. I had contacted Paper Skeletons 3D, which has also done some prior work with other creators such as Maritime Foam, Foam Blasted, also known as Marcus, Flux Labs, to name a few. And I really got to get a good feel for the quality and art behind the whole 3D printing process. The effort and the sacrifices that take place during the designing of these blasters, these parts, and the amazing feeling of actually owning a 3D printed blaster. I went over that in that video. Following the release of that video, something crazy that nobody was expecting happened. Adam got slammed. Literally everybody wanted a stapler. I thought people had already known about this because of the PNNN video where I found out about it or Captain Slug just being a popular designer and putting out his files. Once this video caught fire, Adam's Etsy store also caught fire. And the last thing I want is for creators and designers and enthusiasts who are in it for the community, who are in this for fun, to feel like it's a chore and to feel like this is a job. I do not want that, but at the same time, I don't want you guys to be deprived of an opportunity having that incredible feeling of owning a 3D printed blaster for the first time at an affordable price with accessible budget offerings and just the pure utter joy that that brought me and the amazing performance that they have, the myriad of opportunities for modding, etc. I don't know if you follow our community post or not, but we have taken ownership of a new 3D printer, not only to help Adam out with this volume, but to help roll out our new offerings that we have announced in these community posts. You guys probably saw my post about the Griffin Shirt doll. That immediately also caught a lot of attention. You guys went crazy about that. I just don't want my fellow 3D print creators to get bogged down because like I said, we're in this for the fun of it. So in about a week's time, there'll be more information about our output capability, but right now we're just getting everything set up. This video is basically one of many videos that I plan on rolling out to assist in those many options that we're gonna have when rolling out these blasters to meet different needs, different technical inclinations, and different budget levels. So basically, I brought up an idea to Adam a couple days ago. I told him, hey, there's a lot of people here that can solder. There's a lot of people here that can assemble a blaster. There's a lot of people here that have been modding blasters for a long time, and they don't necessarily have a budget for these high tier, fully assembled 3D printed blasters. It kinda sounds like me. I have all of those skill sets, but I don't really have the disposable income to just go around on a shopping spree and getting a whole bunch of these 3D printed blasters. Enter the kit offerings. My idea to Adam was why don't we just offer kits where people can just purchase a kit and they can then assemble the blaster. That gives you kind of a sense of accomplishment as well. It's like building a Lego set. All the fun is really packed in into the building process and then the reward is seeing the finished model. So that's a very similar result that you get to when you assemble a blaster. So we just considered how awesome it would be in addition to pre-assembled blasters to also offer kits allowing the user, the buyer, to build their own blaster and then showcase their blaster on their social media or just enjoy their new 3D printed blaster. So in this video, we're gonna cover the complete assembly of one of the most complex and intricate builds, the Griffin Stapler. The reason I chose the stapler is because if you could build a stapler, you could build 
almost any 3D printed blaster, especially a Griffin or even a Griffin Cherdal or any remix of the Griffin because the stapler happens to have the most moving parts. Mind you, not many electronics like some other full auto offerings or electronic solenoid offerings, but it does have all the fundamentals you're gonna need to build a Griffin. We're gonna cover the full tutorial on how to build the Griffin in this video. In future videos, I'm gonna be following up with different battery packages or I should say power packages that we're gonna offer with the Griffin such as 2S, 3S, and even a 4S option. More on that later though, that's gonna be in future videos, but right now in this video, I wanted to cover the assembly of the Griffin. For those of you who wanna opt for ordering a kit, instead of a more expensive, fully assembled blaster. These blasters do take about two hours to assemble and they're all assembled by hand, so you can understand the extra cost. Then you can opt for the kit. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right guys, so as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to take advantage of the fact that I had to replace some parts that were broken on my stapler and go ahead and change the color of the actual frame. This gray looked pretty cool online, but once the blaster was assembled, it didn't offer the contrast that I was looking for against the mid-century teal. But I think black is definitely gonna bring us to that result that we're looking for. The third benefit of this video, which I think is the biggest one and the one that brings the greatest value to you, is the fact that I'm gonna be showing a brief, over-the-top demonstration of how to assemble your Griffin. I will be participating in the distribution of these and kits will become available as an alternative if you feel technically inclined and compelled enough to build one of these and maybe save a couple bucks on a pre-assembled unit, we can ship you a kit and you could use this video as a reference on how to build your stapler. Now, as opposed to a regular Griffin, the stapler is a little bit more intricate. It does have a little bit more hardware, a lot more moving parts, a few things going on up here as well as back here. We'll get into that. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and take my stapler apart so I can show you the electronic connections and how the cabling is routed through the blaster. And then we'll get into the bolts and the rest of it. Let's get into it, guys. All right, guys, once you have your motors all nice and soldered up, you're gonna insert them on this side of the motor cage. Make sure that you screw them on with the included screws. There's only one of its kind in this kit. They do come pre-Loctite glued. If they don't, you can always just put a little drop on it of your own, just for extra security. And then now we're ready to pop in our worker flywheels. We go with worker smooth because they're the best for the smooth operation of the blaster, nice and quiet. It keeps everything fair and balanced and it helps the life of your darts. I run these on all my blasters. I did it on my 4S Strife. We're definitely gonna stick with this. Now we're ready to put the top plate of the motor cage on. It's basically this piece right here that sits on the top of the blaster. You got two M10 screws on either side of the motor. Tighten these all the way down. You don't wanna over tighten these screws. Remember you're screwing into filament at the end of the day. You're not screwing inside a metal guide. Just until you feel a little bit of tension on your driver bit, that should be where you stop. And now we're ready to put the undercover. You see this little slot right here? You're gonna route your wires right in there. You're gonna make sure that it's centered and that your wires have a nice play right outside here. This back hole here is gonna take an M20 screw and these two front ones here are gonna take M10s. Next thing you wanna do is attach the connecting frame piece. I'm gonna use my old gray pieces in areas where it's hard to find the contour lines on camera, but basically I'm putting it in black, but it's this piece right here that looks like this, like an L-shaped bracket. This piece is gonna be directly attached to here the cables are gonna go on the outside of it. All right guys, so now we're gonna install the front piece of our ammo chamber. This piece that looks like this, we're doing mines in black, but it's basically the same. Here we're using an M6 hex head bolt on the lower of the two screws. And that's gonna go right here. It has a little slot for you to wrap your cable management right there. And you're just gonna put these screws in. Just like that. And now you're ready to put your connecting frame piece. Looks like this, and the cables go outside of this frame piece. This is gonna be the upper section of your ammo chamber. And that one is gonna go right there. This is an M15, I believe. Let me just double check that to make sure. Yep, this is an M15 bolt right here, just so you can see what the part looks like in this more visible gray color. It's like an L bracket kind of deal. That's gonna go right here with that M15 bolt, guys. Just like that. So now we got the front part of our Griffin stapler together. Now normally this blaster comes with this single piece here. It gets bolted to this section here, but I ordered the mini rail version this time around, which also has an attachment that goes into this piece right here. We're gonna go ahead and attach these back ones here, which happen to be two little M6s. So we're gonna put those in first. There's no other screw holes that we're covering, so it's safe to just go ahead and install this just to get out of the way. 
Also guys, this front little nozzle goes right over here. It takes two M10s here and actually an M10 in the bottom as well. All right, now I'm just gonna reach into a bag of spare hardware that I had gotten from Adam. Now I recommend when you do purchase your stapler or any Griffin for that matter, you always get some spare hardware. You never know when you're gonna need it. Like right now I had a little spare rail. It's always nice to get a little bit more insurance. We'll try with this M16 first or M15 here. Try with that one first. Some of these areas, just gotta kind of clamp the area together while you push the screw in so the screw is not the one doing all the holding together of the frame. You don't wanna be in that situation. You don't wanna de-thread these screw pockets either. We're gonna put an M10. This hole is a lot more shallow, so I think this hole will be more adequate for an M10. And then we can go ahead and put that lower M6 in to complete the securing of this rail to this piece here. Okay, so we got our front part of our griff in there together. You want to keep your cables all nice and loose back here. Now we're ready to continue assembling our blaster, but I think it's a good time to start assembling our grip and switch assembly. I'm going to use my old grip as a guide here. This part is really simple. Basically, you first want to seat the spring, make sure that it's nice and comfortable in its new home. I personally like to just get the spring manually and first compress it all the way until it just sits. And then I can just go ahead and put it on the trigger separately in the next step. Now we're going to take this little teal part which is already halfway taken off of my old unit like i said i wanted to make sure that i already had the parts where i knew they were going to go as a reference so i didn't take my old one completely apart i mean i did but there's a few key areas that i did not touch for that reason as you can see this little pin shaft it's a pressure fit so you want to get anything pointy but not too pointy that you'll ruin it and then you're just going to pop that pin out like that once you pop out that little pin, you're going to reinsert it in a new frame like that. And you might as well just put the gear on it while you're at it. You're actually going to sit the gear first and then the trigger right there. Kind of help keeps things together. And now while we're at it, we're just going to go ahead and attach this piece since it kind of helps keep things together here. One of the many frame pieces that are going to sit on the outside here. All right guys, now that you have your trigger assembly ready, now you wanna install your rev trigger. Now, something I had to do to my original one, and maybe because it was a prototype, I'm not sure if Adam has machined it out a little bit now. I had to dremel out a little bit this area because my rev trigger was catching a little. I'm not sure that's the case anymore. What I like to do, like right here, I can see a little bit of just excess plastic. I just get my trusty scalpel or X-Acto blade, and I just give it a light trim right here, guys. And that's usually enough to get it to where it's not seizing anymore. Doesn't really take much. A little bit of clearance never hurt nobody. So now we're just gonna try out our rev switch again and like butter. So now we're gonna mount the actual rev switch itself. You wanna make sure that the cables are coming around the blaster here. What you wanna worry about is you wanna make sure that your battery lead goes this way. Basically all your cables are gonna go through the back here. This is how it's gonna go mounted initially. You don't want any cables going here through the front because they're gonna interfere with your pusher mechanism. You wanna secure this switch right here. Oh, look at that. Adam also sent me a black gear. That was kind of cool. So while we're here, we're just gonna go ahead and pull my old gray gear out. Put the new black gear in. Nobody sees this through the outside of the blaster, but it's nice. His level of integrity, including this many things in the new color. I really appreciate that. Now for these, you definitely want to use the M20s. You want to make sure that the screw goes completely through this frame piece right here. As you can see, the screw protrudes a little bit, but not enough to prevent our scale from clipping on nicely, as you can see there. Rev switch is nice and clicky. You'll know your switch is in place when you hear this. Just a nice, subtle, and clear click. Our grip assembly is officially together. Remember, you wanna run these cables to the back, but we're not even there yet. The next thing we wanna do now is we wanna start assembling our blaster. Your next step is to get this little L-shaped piece and put it into this frame piece just like this. I'm using the gray one because it's more visible, but I do have this part in black, which I'm switching to. So we're gonna do exactly what I did over there. Again, we're looking at my old gray one as a reference. Just like that. This part is gonna sit right in there and you're gonna secure it with an M10 on either side. Again, you only wanna do one side and you're gonna see why here in a minute. Now we wanna attach this right here to this part of the blaster, just like this. That's gonna require a single M10 right in here. Just like that. Now you wanna take a plate that looks like this. I'll show you the gray one for better reference. It looks just like this. 
and we're gonna attach it just like this on this side. And this is the first piece that's actually gonna join these two pieces that we've just assembled together. This is the first step in actually starting to get the blaster together. So we're gonna go ahead and put two M10 bolts in this leading edge piece right here. And then I'm gonna proceed to show you what size of bolts goes in the other locations. Once you got your two M10s here, you're gonna proceed with two M5s, very short five millimeter screws in this area here because we don't want those screws coming through to the ammo chamber. Remember, this is where the darts are gonna sit. Make sure they grip just like that. Make sure they're nice and tight, but doesn't have to be like extremely tight. Now you're ready to secure this section here. I'm gonna go with at least an M6 here in this area. That's what it had from before. When it's a new print, you kind of have to push on that first threading just to make sure that you're breaking in those threads. Cause remember these are areas, these are pieces that have never been screwed into before. So you just gotta get that initial thread in. And once you do, it's usually downhill. It's just harder when it's a piece that's holding the whole blaster together because you have to hold both pieces of the blaster together. You'll have forearms like Popeyes when you're done with this, but you'll get pretty used to this. It's gonna become routine after a while. All right, guys, making some progress. Got the blaster actually together now. Now we're ready to install our pusher assembly, I believe. Now we're gonna install our gear assembly cover plate, which is this little plate that looks like this. As I've been doing with most of my parts until now, I've been showing you the gray version so you can get a better look at how it looks. And this one was being secured with an M6 screw right up front here. Just make sure your cables are nicely routed out the back and around the back of the blaster there. M6 is gonna go right here. And what this is doing, it's keeping your trigger from popping out like it had been doing for me this entire time. So I'm gonna be very, very happy to not have that happen to me anymore going forward on this build. Okay, now you're gonna go ahead and install your pusher, guys. The way to do this is really easy. You wanna make sure that the pusher sits flush with this area right here. You don't want it sitting too in and you don't want it sitting too far back that it doesn't get the dart into the flywheels. You want it to sit flush. And then once you have it flush, you wanna make sure these cables are tucked away. And then you're gonna get this separator plate, which is gonna work as exactly what it's named to do. It's gonna separate the cables from the pusher and it's going to secure the rest of this area here. Also the plate where your magnet attaches to. I kept the screws on here, but basically it's got an M10 in the front, an M15 in the very front, and the back is an M6. All right, guys, blaster is really starting to come together now. Wanna to make sure that your pusher mechanism works really well. You can do it by just testing it like this. If you need to realign it, this is probably gonna be your last chance to do that, as now we're gonna actually install the cover plate right here. This is also another piece that brings the blaster further together. Just make sure that the pinhole on this piece is facing the rear, as it's gonna play a role in the battery box attachment. Now, I already left the screws on this, but these are M10s. You're just gonna bolt each one down, and then we're gonna move on. All right, guys, after those parts are tight, you're ready to mount your retractor assembly. Basically, you get this piece. There should be a piece of styrofoam in there. You're gonna get your badge retractor piece here. I know that Adam included a black piece. I'll change that later, but for the sake of the video right now, we're just gonna make sure that we get this little piece out through here. This is just gonna rest freely in here. You're gonna bolt this to this area with two M6, these tiny screws. Now we're gonna leave this like this for now because we have to build our ammo compartment door. So we're just gonna go ahead and get to that next. I left my original one intact because I want to basically just get the new black piece and assemble it with the right hardware right off of this one. So we're going to start with the magnet right here. Magnet seems to have two 10 millimeter M10 bolts. We're just going to go ahead and swap that right over here. I use the power to just start the threads. I don't use it to drive it all the way home. As I talked on a lot of my videos, you don't wanna do that because it could lead to some really ugly de-threading. All right, guys, and we're gonna do the same thing for this one just here. This time we got M6s on this side. And by the way, this little piece here is a magnet. I believe this one is also held in by some M6s, this little conical piece right here. Next, we're gonna go ahead and remove these two little hinge pieces because we have new black ones that we're gonna install. If you're building your blaster from scratch, you wanna go ahead and just install these on these L pieces here. I'll tell you what the screw size is in a second. And that would be an M10. So there you go, guys.
Now we're gonna uninstall these two teal pieces and mount them onto our new black door. Let's get into it. And now guys, we're pretty much ready to attach this door. But before we even do that, we now wanna take advantage that we have something to actually hold our bungee cord on the other side and we wanna run our pulley system. We're gonna go around with the pulley. We're gonna tuck it into the ammo compartment as shown and then seat the pulley on the pulley seat. And then we're gonna get the pulley cover and cable management cover. We're gonna put it over this area here like this. And this is gonna take a little bit of finger pressure. Might be a little bit of a pain, but this is the only way to do this in a clean way. Just like that guys. And then you wanna make sure this little piece is accessible from this side make sure the cables are not pinched now you want to put an m6 screw right here make sure that the screws are screwed in far enough so they serve as a spacer what i mean by that is you can easily tuck the cables around the screws so that when you do present this plate down the screws are already in a position where they're going around the cables and not on them or through them Now you're ready to assemble your loading and follower mechanism. This little lever here is gonna ride on the outside of this door. You can actually present that now if you'd like. And this is the lever that's going to basically follow the darts as they get fed through the flywheels upwards. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna feed this little lever through this door. Make sure that the alignment of this section here, which has this little piece that attaches to your sling, is exposed. And then you wanna attach your return. You see how it has a slotted area where it's wider and then shorter? I'm using the gray piece now. I'm gonna change this piece to black later on to match. Adam did send me a black piece, but this is just to illustrate. There's a wide area here and then a slotted area. What you're gonna do is you're gonna insert this in the wide area and then slot it in. So therefore, we have our follower installed now. And the way this works, you're gonna pull this down as you've seen on my stapler video. And then when you close the door, this is automatically going to feed the darts in as you fire them off. Now this part is tricky guys. What you have to do is loosen the bolts that are holding this area here to the back plate. In fact, I would argue that it's better to even remove the bolts altogether because the way that this blaster is designed is what I like to call low tolerance. And there's a little slot here where this little piece rides in here. And in order to access that, you have to have this entire area loose. So I would argue just go ahead and loosen up this area here. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to fit that in. You also will want to remove this piece. We installed it earlier just to maintain rigidity throughout the body as we're building the blaster. But right now, you'll have to completely remove it. Don't just loosen it because you could break this part. Completely remove it. This is the only way we're going to be able to fit our door. Door. Really tight tolerance stuff here guys. So now with this piece loosened up, you'll see that now we can fit our door just like that. Just make sure that everything is still in place while you're doing it. That's the challenging part. What we want to focus on right now is securing the front piece of the door with this piece that goes here in the front of the blaster. You could go ahead and reinstall that at this time now. All right guys, once you have this part secured here, on your stapler it's probably going to look like this. If you didn't buy the tactical rail package from Paper Skeletons, just wanna make sure that everything works as it should. Wanna make sure there's no snags on this door piece here. Something you also wanna do now is install your magnet. And it's pretty much not the magnet itself because the magnet itself is built into this. It comes off of one of those kitchen refrigerator magnets. This is just basically a roller bearing and it's basically just going to serve as the metal in which the magnet on the door is going to be attracted to in order to help the door lock. Right now what we want to do is complete assembling the blaster. We got to put this grip on and we got to put the other side grip on. Now I already left the bolts inside but they're basically M10 on the top and M6 on the bottom. You can go ahead and put that in now. Also don't forget to re-secure this area here which is the ammo loading plate back to the ammo compartment rib. Starting to come together pretty nicely. The next thing you wanna do here, guys, you wanna install this body reinforcement section here. Now, luckily the designers of this particular model were thoughtful enough to put these front screws accessible from this area here because otherwise it would be very difficult to get those on. You wanna go with some M10s for this area since the screws do have to go pretty far to reach these recesses. You basically want to get one in first and then the other one because you're going to be working at a weird angle here and just make sure that this part here is aligned while you're tightening these as well. This brace here just basically helps keep the blaster more structurally together just as well as the top rail is going to do which we're going to get into here in a little bit. And then you want to get two M10s here in the back just to seal it all off. 
Once you got that in, it's time for the rail. The rail basically sits here on the top, just like this. There's no front or rear. As long as the screw holes align, I'm just basically gonna get the screws that were on my old rail and use those for guidance. They seem to be M10s, every single one of them. Present all four and then drive them home. And now you're ready to install your battery door, guys. It's pretty much downhill from here. Now the battery door can be tricky because it has this little step here. It goes completely wrapped around the blaster and very carefully without snapping it or forcing it, you want to pretty much slide it over and then it's going to naturally pop in at a certain point in which now you can put your screws in install your m10s here in the back and then ultimately you want to put an m6 right here now tricky part you want to make sure the cables are within the little channel that this had you could look under it with one of these desk magnifying lamps and just get something like a small pin and move the cable if necessary into the channel mine was out of the channel it was actually right on the screw path so i very gently scooted it over and now it's in the cable path so you guys definitely want to make sure that that's in place before putting the screw ultimately back in this is an m15 screw i just grabbed the one that was on my old battery door and you want to make sure you very gently drive it home until it's nice and snug and now it's okay to go ahead and drive your right side grip scale back on just like that guys all we have to do is put the battery door on basically you're just gonna hook it on back like this just like you would on your normal griffin and then slide this home oh and yes very important we can't forget little m6 is going to secure the other side of the battery box to the frame from this end so there's a total of four screws that are securing the battery box of the frame. I appreciate it that way. The more screws, the better, the more sturdier the blaster is going to be. And of course, here's your little knob tightening the battery box to the blaster. And there you have it, guys. If it's written in the stars, close your eyes and listen to the rhythm of your heart. If it's written in the stars, close your eyes and listen to the rhythm of your heart. If it's written in the stars, Close your eyes and listen to the rhythm of your heart If it's written in the stars Close your eyes and listen to the rhythm couldn't be happier with my 3d printed stapler tactical version with the rail you guys are gonna love all the options that we're gonna offer i plan on putting multiple types of motors for 2s 3s and even a special offering for 4s right now i have my special 4s in here with the extended battery door now mind you the valkyries have a slower spool up time i do plan on doing krakens or eventually maybe even something crazier like worker mod stage threes but for now i'm really happy with this you guys know my love for full length blasters this is a stapler guys if you want to know how i feel about this just watch this video but at the same time the black frame on this mid-century teal it's like a honeymoon after a honeymoon <laughs> if you enjoyed this video you're definitely gonna like this one i'll catch you on the next one stay blasting foam fam <laughs>